Barney Brass Quintet. Watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Good evening from College Park, Maryland bounces back. Actually, they got the season started tonight with a 92-68 win over UMBC. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Bruce is away from the camera tonight. Mason looked a little bit more like the type of team we expected to see when the season started. Yeah, definitely did. Uh, aggressive getting to the basket. Still struggling to shoot the ball, but look, 92 points when you only make six threes and miss, I think, 13 free throws in the game. Uh, that, that's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, UMBC can definitely get up and down the court. They can score it. They're a team that pushed Louisville to the edge early, earlier in the season. Wasn't sure what to expect coming in. But you walk away, uh, that, that's the same type of performance that last year's team put up this this time of year, but just got to get better now, game over game. Uh, no margin for error left in the season. No, there is. Uh, Juju, 15 points, 13 boards, a little more physical play. Jameer Smith looked like Jameer Smith for a little Jameer bit. Young. Jameer Young, sorry, wrong player. We'll get that fixed in the post edits. Jameer Young has the 20 points, looked like himself driving to the basket. Uh, he got 14 from Scott, and he was talking about shooting the ball. You know, Deshaun Harris-Smith, wonderful physical play, really has some handle on the ball. Goes two from eight from the free throw line. And overall, yes, Maryland, six of 21 from three. Uh, capped off by this shot from Jamie Kaiser to uh, take it to halftime. Absolutely uncharacteristic ball over the past few days. That's as bad as they've looked. I've watched this team for a long time. I remember a season when they didn't win an ACC game. I'm not sure they looked as bad as they did at Villanova. So, no, I didn't know what to expect. You've coached more recently than I have, and it's a different sport. What happens when your team just forgets how to play for a little while? I mean, you, you go back to the basics and practice, and, and what you try and do is, I think, uh, as a staff at, at this level of college basketball, I mean, you're talking about one of the top ten budgets in all of college basketball that this program has, you, you start to game plan a little bit more aggressively, maybe put a little bit more work uh, in, in the days in between and try and get a more concise, better game plan together. Uh, you, you sort of you have to treat the game like it's a much bigger game because at this point, you're uncertain, if, and your players become uncertain at some point. If they can win, uh, you just have to get back to that. Uh, I'm sure they spent a lot of extra time in shoot around, extra time doing dribbling work. Obviously, spacing the floor was a spot where this team very much struggled uh, over the past couple of weeks or over the last week or so. So you just you get back into those basic things because you know if you play your basic game, you make the shots you should make. You're not. You know, you might not score 92, but you're not going to score 40. You're going to land somewhere in between. You're going to play competitive basketball. Uh, you have to reinstill, and hopefully it happened. You have to find the belief that you're able to win again and, and build off of that. So you you move on. Uh, South Alabama is a team that's coming in here uh, Saturday. You're going to have to, you know, do the same thing. Get the game play. Get back on the practice court. And, and then come prepared, ready to play with the mindset that that team can and will beat you if you allow them to. This is college basketball. Every team has a shot every game. Before we go to break, one thing I noticed, even tonight, Maryland got beat defensively down the court again. And I don't I don't ever want to see my team getting run out after a made basket. They need to concentrate better. I'm sure they'll figure this out. And tonight was one step in the right direction. We'll be back after this word from Viner Borgates and from the big dog himself.
the biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck the speed of the truck or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle, you're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Back in College Park, unlike uh, past few games, Maryland still won. So, Mason, talk about defense and intensity and where the physical play yeah, I was. Mean, uh, well, if we go back to my last point, that's exactly what tomorrow, when you get into the practice room, when you get into the film room, when you look at evaluating this game, if I'm Kevin Willard, if I'm one of the student managers that he uh, so joyfully loves to talk about how much work they put in when it comes to uh, post-game breakdown, going to the next game. Those are the clips that I start my film session with. Those are the clips that I end it with. That's what I go back and look at uh, in practice tomorrow when you're going back and forth and getting back, finding your matchup. You know, it's the simple things that this team didn't execute on when they lost two close games. Again, another mid-major program coming in here uh, on Saturday. They're going to come out. They're going to look at this game and they're going to say, where can we take advantage of the team? Getting back on defense is going to be the number one highlight on their game plan coming in on Saturday. All right, so as we head to Thanksgiving, we are very thankful that we get to do this. We want to thank you for watching. Thank you to Viner Four Gates, our hometown IT team, and to Rich Jackets for sponsoring this, for Bruce Posner for providing the opportunity so many years ago, for all the great work that you've done with the podcast, with Jordan, now with Ahmed. And I want to thank everybody again for watching. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason. Happy Thanksgiving. Maryland wins. We will see you after Rutgers and then hopefully after the basketball game on Saturday night. Good evening.